Hi, I hope you're having a great day and I hope you're staying safe at home. Today I want to talk about this very, very powerful vitamin. If we have a deficiency of this vitamin, it affects the quality of our hair. It affects the quality of our skin, our cell membrane, diabetes, and even the way that we feel. The way we feel is controlled by neurotransmitters like serotonin and dopamine. If you have an imbalance in serotonin and dopamine, you don't feel good or you find it difficult to feel good. And that's why some chemical imbalances are treated with medication because you genuinely have an imbalance or you're not producing enough of that particular neurotransmitter. But in all other cases, it can come, sometimes come down to just a deficiency of one vitamin. A simple example, a deficiency of vitamin D vitamin D3 is related to innumerable problems. For the longest time, we thought that vitamin D, the sunshine vitamin, was only your bone health. But it's so much more, from your sex hormones, to your hormones, to your bones, to your hair, to your skin, to your kidney, to your liver, to your heart. The vitamin I'm talking about today is something called inositol, which is known as vitamin B8. The B vitamins have several vitamins, so sometimes your doctor puts you on a B complex. And that's right, because a B complex can help you with a deficiency of several B vitamins that can be linked to fatigue, skin, hair, the metabolism of fats, the metabolism of carbohydrates, and all of these things. For example, vitamin B8 is also a vitamin responsible for the transportation of fat. You see, when we eat fat, good fats, they need to be transported to our cells. Every cell has a cell membrane. The health of your cell membrane is absolutely critical for every function of the cell, whether it's protection of the DNA, protection of the nucleus, communication with another cell, communication with the brain, cell membranes are important for us. So vitamin B8 is responsible for the health of your cell membrane. So if you don't have the right amount of vitamin B8, you have poor cell membrane. Examples are people who are on heavy medication, heavy steroids, chemotherapy, radiation, not a problem. As long as you are replenishing the depleted vitamin that your treatment is damaging or depleting, you can still maintain great health. The second thing, insulin and diabetes. Inositol is prescribed by a lot of functional medicine doctors around the world and even by allopathic doctors. They give you medication for your diabetes, but they also give you a vitamin B8 or an inositol, or they also give you a B complex because for insulin sensitivity, for the production of insulin, for your diabetes, you require vitamin B8. So you see, we're clouded with complication. We constantly look for more and more complicated ways to reverse our disease, to get better, to handle autoimmune conditions, but we forget simplicity. We forget that the deficiency of even one vitamin or one trace mineral can cause innumerable problems in the human body. So insulin and diabetes, vitamin B8 plays a huge role. Serotonin and dopamine. You know, when people have depression, people are chronically anxious. We need to understand that they have an imbalance in serotonin and dopamine. For serotonin and dopamine, you need the right amount of vitamin B8. So you see, it's not always about a drug or a medication. I don't have a problem with a drug or medication. I have a problem with it being all about the drug and medication. The drug and medication is your crutch to treat the symptom. Over and above that, you need to look beyond medicine and look at what am I deficient in? Is my diet giving me the right amount of vitamins and minerals to sustain the intelligence within my body that helps me heal, recover, protect, prevent? That's what we have to look at. Panic attacks. There have been countless studies done where vitamin B8 inositol is given to people who have constant panic attacks because it helps you reduce that by playing around with your serotonin and your dopamine balance. It's also given to people who have bipolar. So functional doctors and even allopathic doctors always prescribe B complexes or they break down and isolate a vitamin B8 in the form of inositol to a patient who has bipolar or anxious disorders as well. PCOS and infertility. Okay, a lot of people, a lot of, a lot of infertility revolves around deficiencies. These deficiencies are caused because of stress. Chronic stress causes certain vitamins and minerals to be depleted from your body and that can come in the way of you being fertile and you can be labeled as in, infertile and you go through infertility. Of course, if you really are infertile, you need infertility treatments, great. But a lot of people, they go through these treatments, it still doesn't work for them. And then they decide to change their lifestyle, start eating the right way, reducing their stress levels, and guess what? Without an infertility treatment, they conceive naturally. So you need inositol to conceive. You need inositol 
to tackle infertility issues and PCOS as well. And this is a game changer in the treatment of PCOS, PCOD. For your hormonal imbalance, you need vitamin B8. You need inositol. Your doctor may give you vitamin B8, your skin specialist, because it's also great for the skin and for hair. Alopecia, inositol and vitamin B8 is used in the treatment of alopecia. It's used in the treatment of hair fall, the graying of hair. When it is combined with pantothenic acid, which is vitamin B5 and folic acid. So many a times your doctor will give you inositol with folic acid. And that's why it's a good, it's a good habit when you have hair fall problems, alopecia, eczema, infertility problems, anxiety, depression, to even check your homocysteine levels. Homocysteine is not just an indicator for your heart health, but homocysteine can tell you that you have a deficiency of vitamin B12 and folic acid. So sometimes your doctor gives you a medication, it's mostly a vitamin called HomoCheck, which bumps up your folic acid and it bumps up your vitamin B12, lowering your overall homocysteine, which is great for your heart, and it's also great for your hair, your skin, and everything else. So you see, you can gauge by now when you're addressing a problem like hair fall, or alopecia, or graying of hair, or skin, or acne, or infertility. You just can't look at the symptom. You gotta go way beyond the symptom, address the root cause, and have a root cause approach if you really, really wanna get better. Vitamin B8 plays a huge role in, meta in metabolic syndrome. What is metabolic syndrome? When you struggle with a lot of belly fat, high triglycerides, high blood pressure, and high blood sugar levels. When you have all of these together, it's termed as metabolic syndrome. And vitamin B8 plays a huge role in reducing, uh, in reducing metabolic syndrome. So what are some of the foods that you will find vitamin B8 in. Number one, you can eat all the food sources. You gotta keep good gut health. Most of the B vitamins get synthesized in the gut. So if you constantly have gut problems, okay, you may be eating a diet rich in these vitamins, but you're not assimilating and absorbing it. And that is why our focus is always number one on your gut health. If I have great gut health, I can absorb and assimilate food far better than someone who's constantly bloated, has constipation, has IBS, has acidity. If you have those problems, it's no big deal. You gotta fix it so that your gut is working the right way and you can assimilate vitamins the right way. So you find vitamin B8 or inositol in citrus fruits. In all of your citrus range of fruits, you will find it. You will find it in fiber-rich foods as well. Insoluble fiber, soluble fiber, whether it's your psyllium husk, your legumes, your grains. It's found in brown rice, and that's why one of our favorite combinations for great health is brown rice or red rice with beans. Like whether it's rajma, whether it's chole, whether it's your legumes, any of the bean family combined with a high fiber grain like brown rice or red rice or black rice is a fabulous, fabulous source of vitamin B8. It's great for your hair, it's great for your skin and everything else. You find it in beans, all of the beans, whether it's your kidney beans, your rajma, your chole, your garbanzo beans, your navy beans, your pinto beans, your lima beans, all of the beans. And we live in a country where beans, there's a variety of beans that are available. As long as you're soaking them well, washing them well, probably soaking it with a little, of, with a little bit of hing or asafoetida. Of course, if you have colitis, if you have a gallbladder removal, you may have to go a little bit easy on these legumes because they can cause a lot of gas and discomfort. But for everyone else, it's a great food to add as a source of vitamin B8. You also find it in corn, you find it in sesame seeds which is why making hummus at home is one of my favorite superfoods. Hummus has your legumes in, which is your chole, your garbanzo beans. It's got sesame, it's got garlic, it's got lemon juice, it's got olive oil, all superfoods great for the skin, for the hair, for metabolic syndrome and everything else. If you're non-vegetarian, you find a high source of vitamin B8 in organ meat, in liver. That's if you're non-vegetarian. You find it in something called brew, uh, Brewer's East. Brewer's East is available on Amazon and most health shops and uh, follow the instructions to use it the right way. It is great for your hair and your skin if it suits you. You also find it in peanuts. So if you don't have a peanut allergy, having peanuts, a handful of roasted peanuts, try to keep away from the salt. It's great for your hair, great for your skin because of the vitamin B8. It's found in cabbage, it's found in raisins, black raisins that you could soak overnight. Great for your gut, great for your hair and skin. So you see, when you eat a balanced diet, okay, you automatically get vitamin B8 and inositol in it. When you're going through heavy treatments, you may deplete it, but you can put it back in through your diet. When you're doing fad diets that stop you, stops you from eating most of the good stuff, that's when you start to have deficiencies. So you'll find people around you who say, hey, I lost weight, but you also lost your hair, 
you lost that glow in your skin, your skin's become more haggard, you're now looking weight, uh, weaker. So you're thinner, but you're weaker and you lost your hair and your skin. That's not the right way to healthy fat loss or weight loss. So remember, vitamins and minerals play a huge role and your first preference is to get it from natural foods. Sometimes your doctor may give you a supplement or a vitamin because you have a compromised gut and no matter how much of the food you eat, you won't absorb it. So sometimes you get a supplement to supplement a deficiency. So there's good and bad about supplements. Some people overuse it. Some people choose the wrong quality, whatever it is. Everything in life should be done the right way with the right intention, right quality and right time. Have a great day, everyone. Until next time, eat smart, move more, sleep right, breathe deep. And remember, you care is all about you.